Oh, that's all right. I, I didn't know we even had the snap. Oh. All right. All right. So I thought, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> How you get from in the quarter downstairs? We <laughs> got you in the quarter down there. <laughs> Good, good seeing you. How do you cure it? Uh, you bring them back with you? I bring them. Uh, you did the right thing. You did, don't take them back. <laughs> <laughs> Have mercy on them. <laughs> All right. So uh, I thought that uh, since we're going to uh, have this occasion today to spread out in this place and fill it up with our practice and meditation, I know those have been coming and staying overnight, has been doing a great job permeating this place uh, with that uh, sweet uh, feel of uh, calmness uh, that meditation tends to always generate. Uh, but I thought since uh, we had an opportunity that we all to get here and we kind of bump up this atmosphere. Uh, but prior to that, I thought we'd talk a little bit more about uh, meditation and all of that, just a sort of a end of the year review. Uh, you know, most company at the end of the year, you know, they're, they're getting all their loose ends tied together and they're making that push to increase that bottom line. So I thought we'll push a little bit too hmm? mm -hmm. and uh, revisit some uh, basic things about meditation and so forth and so on. And so, of course, we're not very formal today and just, just kind of loosey goosey, you know, and. Uh, I won't be mean or anything, so relax. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's no whooping today, huh? Amen. Whoop day is over with. You don't have whoop day once a year. <laughs> uh, but I do want to uh, just kind of remind you a little bit about uh, practice and meditation and things of that nature and whatever else comes up. And so you can interject your questions as we go along. It's sort of like a group dukasat, if you will. Hmm? And then afterwards, we'll find spots throughout the house, and uh, and we'll sit a little bit. Would that be all right? Is that like a good agenda? Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess the thing that I wanted to bring to your attention first and foremost is that uh, meditation is uh, not a kind of process uh, that you engage in for the sake of uh, becoming divine. something like that, you know, because divinity is, is already the case. One of the points I was trying to stress on Namde was that uh, you are already uh, that which is uh, God. You are already made out of the same stuff that is God. There is no other uh, material, if you will, <laughs> in the universe. So by definition, any, if you exist, you are already divine by definition. So meditation is not a kind of process that uh, you uh, are becoming uh, divine. It is more or less a process of recovering the recognition and the awareness of your already existent divine nature. Uh, this consciousness, this very consciousness that we all are endowed with is uh, that which is divine in us. Our consciousness is the divinity. Hmm? Mm -hmm. uh, and recognizing that we are just this consciousness, you see, without any identity. You see, beloved, uh, the greatest fear that we have, and uh, Dhamma Maji talked beautifully about fear, uh, and you, if you were paying attention to her, the argument that you were presenting, I think uh, it became clear that it's not even so much our fear of death, and in fact, though, my, it's not even so much our fear of life, although that's a major fear we have. But the core fear <coughs> is the fear of the loss of your identity. This is, this is where everything hinges. You, see, you are afraid of the loss of your identity. An identity that is based on something that you are not. What you are, our consciousness, pure, mm -hmm. without any identity. Consciousness and the ability to assume any identity you like. That's what God does. 
You see, you're just God assuming the identity of a Sahasaji. You're just God assuming the identity of a Dhammaraj. You see? But that, identif that identity based on having this body, the, the sense of self based on your identification with the body, mm -hmm. is just a mirage. Mm -hmm. But because you don't know who you are, you are clinging to who you are not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to let that go. Because the fear is that if I let that go, I won't be nothing. But the reality is when you let that go, you become everything. It is the clinging to your identity that constitutes the fundamental self-contraction that is ego. Ego is just this contraction, this clinging to your identity. Hmm? And the fear is the loss of, of identity. What meditation is uh, purpose to do is to uh, provide you with the means of recovering the experience of what you really are. You're not even a who. You are a what. And what we all are is consciousness itself. Just this consciousness. Mm -hmm. Capable of entering into any form at any place throughout all of existence and time. So it's important that you try to really uh, appreciate uh, what the saints and mystics are telling us. And this consciousness that we all are is the same. The consciousness <coughs> that underlies my identity is exactly the same consciousness that underlies your identity. The same consciousness that underlies your identity and everybody else, not just humans, but even non-humans not just sentient beings, even non-sentient beings. Mm -hmm. Everyone and everything is just a modification of just this consciousness itself. It's like your life, you see? Life, the life force in you, it's the same life force in me. It's the same life force in a plant outside, in a squirrel, in a mosquito, in a, a cockroach. It is just life. Mm -hmm. Well, in the same way, even more Basic than life itself is consciousness. Life is just an expression of consciousness. You see? Mm -hmm. And meditation is the means of recovering the experience of being just this consciousness itself. Not uh, identified with any particular form. Mm -hmm. When you become identified with the form that consciousness takes, that becomes the basis of your fear. Because you know that this form, all forms, are temporary. They just wave, they rise, and they fall. And then the ocean again takes another form. Then that form dissipates in the ocean again. You see? But if your understanding is not. Uh, profound, then, then you would tend to cling to this identity. So I wanted you all to begin to uh, factor that into your considerations that you are doing in these uh, cooler groups and, and really begin to see the connection between your struggles and your tendency to cling to maintaining your identity and the fear that you have of losing your identity. And that's what death is all about, because in death you begin to lose your sense of who you are. The roles disappear, and so forth and so on. And what is being de destroyed is your sense of who I am, that identity. You see. All of your reluctance to engage in the sadhana is because when you get too deep into it, that you lose this sense of being who you are, you see, you want you don't want to cease being who you are. Mm -hmm. So do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any questions about it?
because we have we have some time today. We're at home, hmm? and this is where we uh, do the the real work, huh? So don't be shy about it. Yes, beloved. Okay, so if it's not just the um, the clinging to the the personality of being um, Juanita, but also being even Guru Mukherjee. Yeah, is all of that. If yeah, all of yeah. Muk Guru Mukherjee is just another identity. Hmm? So there's various identities that... Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. You see, we, 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 uh, we are attached to our identities. Identity is the basis of all of our attachments, you see. Whatever goes to support and maintain and perpetuate our identity are those very things that we remain attached to and find it almost impossible to give up because to give them up is to give up a part of my own sense of self, you see. And I don't want to lose that. Hmm? Because I'm thinking that I am something uh, that is uh, <coughs> physical or circumstantial. But consciousness, which is what we are, hmm, has no identity. Consciousness can assume any identity, but itself has no identity. Hmm? It is uh, unfathomable, incomprehensible. You see, what we are is just like what God is, and that is incomprehensible. It is a mystery. You see? It's impossible for the mind to truly understand it. You see? Yes, beloved. Yes, I was just going to say, Bhagwan, they say that uh, the destiny of the drop is to become reunited with the ocean, mm -hmm. and that the drop loses its identity mm -hmm. and, and the and, and ocean. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. The drop. It's in the ocean. Mm -hmm. You see. It's a contraction. Mm -hmm. And it thinks itself different from the ocean, but <laughs> you see. I mean one of the uh, facts that comes out of any kind of a metaphysical consideration is that uh, in the beginning there was God. That's it. Nothing else. <laughs> Nothing else existed. You see. So where did all that come, that which exists come from okay. other than God? It can only be a modification of what you call God. Mm -hmm. Even in quantum mechanics we talk about the Big Bang Theory to account for all that exists. Mm -hmm. You see. They say that there was just this and everything came into being. Right? Mm -hmm. But what did the Big Bang itself come out of? <laughs> you see? The Big that had also come out of something. What is that something? You see, you can't, you can't conceive it. You see? It's inconceivable. Hmm? But even in physics and science, we know that the, the physical universe is just a modification of some very fundamental elements, right? Hydrogen, nitrogen, all of that. You know, so even at the most fundamental level, you see, everything is made out of just this same stuff. So if God, whatever you want to call it, you see, that undifferentiated uh, energy and light, uh, if that is our working definition of God, then everything is just a manifestation of that light. Everything is just a manifestation of God. It can't be a manifestation of anything else. Are you with me? Yes, sir. And that includes you. You follow me? Yes, but that, that feeling of uh, 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 the need of uh, wanting to have an identity, that goes even beyond the grave. Oh, yes. Because that's what uh, keeps this world going. Oh, yes. You know, I mean, you 
feel disembodied or, or, or I read or heard. Mm -hmm. You feel disembodied, what you want is another body. So you yeah. have a so that you could yeah, because your body becomes the uh, The foundation of who you feel you are. You see? And so if something, if this body goes, then, oh, God, I, I cease to exist. You know what I mean? That's the belief, mm -hmm. you see. And so there's that clinging. You know, your, uh, uh, your, your, your sense of self is made out of this body, is made out of your mind. Your mind in the sense of your memory, see. Without memories, you can't perpetuate the identity. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. That's why we do a certain kind of thinking. You see? Most of our thinking is done to maintain the identity. You see? That's how you maintain your sense of identity. It's, there's a kind of thinking you engage in. You see? That is associated with memory. That's why people are so preoccupied with the past, because that preoccupation with the past is what enables them to carry on and carry forward that fundamental identity. You see? Yes, ma'am? But that experience we doesn't have to be fearful. I, it was joyful. It was. Mm -hmm. It's the fear of the loss of it, you see? It's but the fear the, of the loss of identity. Right, but the experience of something greater than that is a beautiful feeling. I mean, it's not a... If you have that experience, mm -hmm. you see my point? And see, you can't really... Uh, uh, you really can't uh, have that experience without having the experience. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you can't... Into, you can't come up with a kind of philosophical or intellectual equivalent to the experience. You follow what I'm saying? You must actually have the experience of being something greater than your present sense of self. That's the purpose of meditation, you see. If you could have that experience outside of meditation, there would be no need for meditation. You can't have that experience through a thinking process. It's on the other side of thinking. It is prior to thinking. See, consciousness itself does not think. <laughs> does it feel? It's being. Yes. Yes. It is aware of the thinking, but itself does not think. It's like in your emotions. Consciousness is aware of your anger. You're you're aware of anger, but the awareness is not anger. Anger. Is it? You're aware of hunger, but that which is aware of hunger itself is not hunger. It is standing prior to all of phenomena. It is that which is conscious of phenomena, conscious of content, but itself is not a content. It is completely unaffected by anything that goes on. Nothing affects consciousness at all. It remains always pure and pristine and transcended of all phenomena. Hmm? It is aware of everything but is not affected by anything. That aw awareness that you have of being unhappy itself is not unhappy. It is aware of your unhappiness. See? And it's uh, recovering one's identification as being just this pure consciousness that is the whole point and, and goal of meditation. Yes, beloved? Well, we just have to, when we're the practice of meditation is like an offset of, of practicing of letting go of things, like the things that we have to let go of physically, even. Mm -hmm. So when we meditate, is that like deliberately making, letting go? It's like it's, you have to have some kind of deliberate 
motive somewhere of letting go when you're meditating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, meditation is a, a kind of uh, cooperation. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of uh, opening. Uh, it's a kind of a way of allowing, you see, all of that to fall away for the sake of experiencing that which you are. It is a letting go. There's no more clinging. You see, when you're not meditating, you're clinging. And you're clinging to everything and everyone in order to maintain and perpetuate uh, your sense of self. You see, that's work. <laughs> that takes a lot of energy. You know, because it's not a real entity. you got to keep working at it. you got to keep putting the log back to fire down. you got to keep putting the log on it. you got to keep doing something in order to maintain your fundamental sense of who you are. And the very interesting thing, just from a sociological point of view, that identity that you have, you didn't even create it. It was given to you. Mm -hmm. You therefore are clinging to an identity that was manufactured for you. It's not like that's who you were when you were born. Mm -hmm. You know, psychologically speaking, you were born with no identity. Someone gave you this very identity that you're clinging to. Someone has told you who you are or what you should be, and you are trying your best to be that mm -hmm. and holding on to it, you see. So how do you, it just seems like it's so impossible for you to, to let go of something that you. Yeah, you have no, yeah, you're absolutely right. It is impossible. That's why the saints and mystics said that unless something interrupts that process of uh, maintaining your identity, unless some outside force enter, there is no way out of your situation. That's the whole argument. Unless we come in contact with a realizer. And a realizer is simply someone who has realized that they are consciousness itself. And, it's, and unless you come in contact with, by grace, such a realizer, then there is no way out for you. There just isn't. You see? Therein lies the whole necessity for uh, having a guru. You see? Otherwise, there's no way out of your situation. None. You just can't get out of it. How could you? You see? You won't even know you're in a situation. Then why would you want to? You wouldn't even have no desire to. So you have to be right, Mukherjee, you see. There is no way out of that. That's why we are so fortunate, all of us, to have heard Dharma, to have a Sangha, all that. I mean, it's amazing. Because now you can become liberated from this uh, attachment to a socially created identity that's not even you. So the, the, the actual practice of, of like the simmering and, and like that is is actually a part of the letting go process. Oh yes. And that's why it's so difficult or uncomfortable. Oh people. yes, absolutely. You see, because when you think about simmering, then you can't think about yourself. So you got to constantly think about yourself to maintain this this identity. It requires a lot of thinking. You have to always be thinking about yourself to maintain that identity. And if you stop that, that identity starts dying. Mm -hmm. And that's scary. Because the fear that, well, and who will I be? Mm -hmm. <laughs> see, that's your fear. You see? If I stop being me, who, what, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. You know? So you got to constantly think and all of the other things associated with thinking. You've got to constantly be involved in the sadhana of maintaining your identity. Because the moment you stop thinking about yourself, it starts falling away. And it starts feeling like you're a death, a dying. You, it's like falling into an abyss. You see what is happening to you. 
but it's, I'm disappearing. You know, it's a terrifying experience. That's why I say you have to understand that your single greatest fear is the loss of your identity. You got to let that go deep into you because you have to understand why you can't practice. Uh -huh. it, it makes sense. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. See? This is why you can't practice. You see? Now, psychologically and psychiatrically, we can propose lesser uh, rationale for it. That's your potty training. There's some trauma that happened to you black somewhere. But that's not it. That's superficial. You see? That's psychologizing. You see? It doesn't go straight to it. You see? I'm taking you straight to it. You're trying to maintain your identity. And meditation <clears throat> undermines and go against that whole process. You're trying to keep your attention on yourself for the sake of maintaining your Ten, uh, identity and meditation is removing your attention from yourself. You see? And that's why you, meditation is such a struggle for everyone. At least in the beginning. You see? Hmm? Until you really understand this thing. Hmm? <coughs> your fear is your fear of losing identity. <coughs> now try to understand that and reflect on that. Try to see how all of your breakdowns ultimately are rooted in this one fundamental thing. You're afraid losing this identity that's been given to you by your society, your culture, your parenting process. You are clinging to a sense of self that has been manufactured and given to you. And that's what you're trying to pull up to. For dear life. This uh, clinging to this false identity shuts down the experience of yourself as being just this pure consciousness. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. To have the experience of just being pure consciousness, you must let go of the experience, maintaining the experience of being who you think you are. You see? I mean, have you ever really pondered that? Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone sitting here think there's someone. Now the question that I'm asking you to consider, are you really who you think you are? And who do you think you are? I mean really, who do you think you are? You do think you are something, okay? What is that? What is that who you think you are? You think you are something, someone, don't you? That someone that you think you are, are you really that? And where did that come from? Where did that come from? I mean, the very... Conditioning. Conditioning. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You've been conditioned, right? And when we say conditioning, Tedavadaji, what we mean, you've been uh, domesticated. You've been trained. You've been... <laughs> what happens to a cow or a pig horse. or a hog or a horse? A dog, that has happened to you. You have been conditioned. Mm -hmm. You have been programmed. You've been told this, told this thing over and over again. It's been put into your mind. Right? Mm -hmm. And you have agreed with all of that input and say, yes, that's who I am. Teacher, mommy, daddy. You see, mm -hmm. television set. You know, I agree with you all. This is who I am. This is who I am. <laughs> <laughs> and you're trying to maintain that, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Especially this time of year. Yeah. Yes. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs>
Pastor, you always talk about the spiritual process as a developmental process. Mm -hmm. So my identity as as David Lee, mm -hmm. being able to drop that and then moving into the identity of Faraji, is that like the process to move me to um, a higher or to move me out of this ability, this uh, clinging to this conditioning process? I'm not sure I understand. You well, I, I, I guess I've been identified with David Lee based on my conditioning. Mm -hmm. Then I get the name Faraji, and it means something totally different. Right, what right, right, my right. conditioning yeah, the device has of a big name. Right. Yeah, that, right. that's, the, that's the ideal behind it, that uh, your big name is a, is a, is a name of, uh, uh, of your higher self, your consciousness. If your if pure consciousness uh, has a name, then... Uh, let's just call it Faraji. You know what I mean? Right. But it's really a nummy. It's nameless. It has no name. But just to help you as a device, okay? You see? So uh, you, you become a Sahasaji. But you have to understand Sahasaji is not referring to this body or the identity at all. Mm -hmm. Sahasaji is just a name we give it to your pure consciousness. A Dhammamaji is the name of your pure consciousness. It has nothing to do with this body. You do, you understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But just as you say, Faraji, when we when you say Faraji, you're still referring back to the same thing that you were when you were saying David. We right. all are. Mm -hmm. yeah. we Aren't are. you all are? Right. <laughs> right. Because that's yeah. Because well, now it, yeah, you have not you missed is, the whole point. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> now you yeah. just got two names. That's right. And you know, that's it. But it all referred to the same thing. Yeah. It's just a synonym. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how the, that's how the ego works. I mean, that's a prime example of how it works, and that's why it's so difficult, Gorsha. Yes, yeah. you can't do it. That's right. You can't do it. Right. You can't figure it out. You can't think your way through it. You can't do it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've been trying. I know. <laughs> 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 you got three names. Guru Dasa, Bibi Dasa, you know what I mean? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Go to yeah. Dasa. I mean, you That's hey. right. That's right. Yeah. I'll refer to the same old, old. condition. Right. right. Yes, beloved. But isn't it true also that this sense of, uh, of uh, needing to... Uh, have an identity is so deep in us that we don't care who, who we right. are. As long as I'm something. As long as I'm somebody. <laughs> that this need to be somebody mm -hmm. is so strong. Mm -hmm. You see my point? Because deep down inside, you really don't know who you are. You see? Uh, deep down inside, uh, you are nothing. But that's the truth. But, you, you know, you, you, it's hard to function out of that, right, right, right. you see. So you need to be somebody, anybody, any damn thing to do, but <laughs> let me be somebody. <laughs> right. And the, uh, the spiritual process is to restore you to your original condition. You are nobody, you see. But, but with the ability to be anybody. You're just this potential, you see. To be absolutely without any status whatsoever, to be nothing. You see. So when you read the mystics, you know, they, they, are, they, they talk like that. You know, I'm nothing, I'm nobody, and happy about it. You see my point? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm because I'm not limited, I'm not trapped. So you cannot stop being who you've been conditioned to be, mm -hmm. you see. Even when it ain't fun no more. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it's not always fun to be who you think you are, mm -hmm. right? But you have no option, you see, you're stuck. So that's that's why you can't change, you see. You, you get trapped in that identity, right? Now you gotta constantly act in ways, do things to maintain it. You, even when you don't feel like it, you know, you gotta maintain it. Cause if I don't do this here, you know what I mean? They're gonna think I'm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Constantly, you see. You're trying to present 
yourself in a way that uh, reflects who you think you are. That's what you are always presenting to other people. You got to actually work at it and helping them at least to maintain a perception of you being who you think you are. So now you see how the plot thickens. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because now you got, I got to control you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because how you respond to me is very important for my maintenance of my identity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It becomes a battle royale going on here now. You see. So you're trying to do something that's again that's impossible. So instead of being Juanita, yeah. Then okay, now I got to perpetuate. You got two things. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And you, you, I can't be a girl book of G. That's right. You wore out. Cause they don't. <laughs> They don't, they, they, they don't support your trying to be Buddha Mukaji at work. <laughs> so that's a problem. Yeah. You see, oh, it's a terrible situation. You're trapped. Yeah. You see, and if you get civil, you know what I mean? You got <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hence the schizophrenia. It's <laughs> the schizophrenia. You become schizophrenic. And you know, it, it, it'd be so much energy wasted in terms of uh, constantly being an information gatherer. Oh, yeah. Because you're going to gather information to perpetuate and, su mm -hmm. and support the role in what that you sure. think you are. So sure. you're constantly gathering information constantly. in order to perpetuate that false Absolutely. sense of identity that society have created for Absolutely. you, you don't create it for yourself. Absolutely. All that other nonsense. Absolutely. And it exhausts you. Mm -hmm. You see, it exhausts you because you gotta constantly come up with stuff yeah. to maintain your image. That's how I work. In the eyes <laughs> of others, yeah, in such a way that it reinforces and feeds and fuels your sense of self. Yes, That's a lot of work. That's why I can't meditate, Don't have no That's energy. what I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. But I mean, but it's, you know, that's yeah. right. When that you sit down, truth. you're already tired. You're tired. You're yeah. worn out. That's the source yeah. of your life. That's yeah. the source right. of your fatigue. Right. It ain't like you walking around uh, carrying boxes all day. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but you but you wore out like you done worked on a chain game. <laughs> well, it's... It's this oh, thinking that exhausted you. Mm. You have emotionally and mentally oh, drained yourself. Right. Trying to maintain your identity in the midst of all of the threats to it. You see? Because people oftentimes are a threat to your maintenance of your identity. Most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> because they're not agreeing with you, so now you got to come up with good arguments. <laughs> <laughs> so when you sit in meditation, you're trying to make a way. You you're, getting your, you're getting your case work. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Right. You're like a lawyer that goes yeah. into the library. Yeah. You're looking for precedence. Yeah. And, right. and, and, you know, so that as soon as you get up, you can represent your face. <laughs> so meditation is a, an occasion to do research. <laughs> you see? And that's how it is. And again, remember, there is a fear. See, the thing I want you to get today, there's a tremendous fear of the loss of this identity. It's a tremendous fear. And you don't even want to be around anybody that poses <coughs> a threat to your ability to maintain this identity. They become your enemy. You see, you don't want to be so around. So you avoid the sun guy. Yeah. Oh, you avoid the sun guy. Avoid you. Yes, That's yeah, right. because That's right. uh, this ain't going to, no. you know, this ain't identity compatible. That's you right. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to <laughs> stay away from the sun Stay away from that. <laughs> you see, My God. this ain't going to work. Jesus. But why, wow. is that, why is that necessary? I mean, you say everything is necessary, so I don't, I don't, why is it necessary to go through that? It's nauseating. Well, uh, the old answer is the same, <laughs> that uh, you can't appreciate not having a toothache. I mean, you have a okay. Actually, you see, there is no answer to that. 
philosophers down through the ages have been trying to answer that. There is no explanation for any of this. It is incomprehensible. You see, it's like asking why would God put Himself through all of this? Mm -hmm. There is no answer. It's incomprehensible, unknowable. Nobody knows. You see, nobody knows. <coughs> It just is. You see? It just is. All right, a few more minutes. And, uh, yes, beloved. Then it seems like to me the question becomes how do I get myself out of this? Mm. Get off the bus. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> identity. Give up that fear. Mm. And you have to give up the fear of the loss of identity, which is like a death. Yes, but I had a question similar to that way back when, and mm -hmm. it's probably lost somewhere now. Okay, because you were saying, um, okay, I have to understand, not because of what you say, but I have, it has to be with me. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that the fact that I know that I'm afraid to lose my identity. Yes. Okay, so if I'm afraid to lose my identity and I'm always clinging, well, if I'm clinging, there's going to be some discomfort there because I'm not going to get my way. Things are going to change. I'm going to become angry, frustrated, and all these things. Mm -hmm. So uh, is that the way that I would do that then, uh, 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 um, a way to know that I'm clinging to something uh, because of the way I feel? Absolutely. You, you Absolutely. know what I'm that's, saying? That's, that's how you begin to work yourself into it. You right. gotta, you got to kind of find your way of, of getting to that point where you can accept it. Right. And then when I say, okay, I don't feel good about this. Something that's is right. going on here. I'm clinging. Yes. And then that will enable me to drop that if I that's keep working right. at it. That's right. When you're able to make the connection between right. your suffering and your clinging to identity, right. then you begin to see that the more I cling to this identity, the more right. I'm suffering. Right. The more I'm suffering, the tired I am. At right. the end of the day, I'm killing myself. I'm knocking myself out. You see? And then in the next moment, the next day, I got to go through the whole process again right. with the same person. I thought we just went over that. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then you got to go into it all over again. And when you begin to see, you know, a point come when you said, this is not worth it. Mm. You know, being... Me, based on this identification with all of what I've been told I am, is not worth it. It's just not worth it. Right, because if I'm not working at it at that level, there's no. I'm, I'm still going to carry the same thing sure. in, into the meditation because sure, sure. it's not enough to say that the master said That's I'm right. afraid to lose my identity. You know, That's I right. don't want more information. I want to do. I, I mean, I have to have something that I know that I can do this. Mm -hmm. to get to what you're saying when mm -hmm. I sit down. Absolutely. You must have that. You see, uh, meditation is not something you engage in simply because you've been told to meditate. Yeah. It's not something you engage in because you've read it in a book. Mm -hmm. It is not something you engage in as a strategy to maintain your social status and all mm -hmm. of that. Meditation must be something that you want to do, right. and it must come from your heart. You see, it must be grounded in the wisdom of the heart, right? And until it is grounded in the, this heart, then it does not happen because it is an identity undermining process, you see? And as long as you think maintaining your identity, your false identity, mm -hmm. isn't it? let me keep reiterating that. It is even wrong to call it your identity. It's an identity that's been given to you. You see? It's not even yours. It's given to you. You're conditioned. You're domesticated. You are socialized. 
the person you are is the product of a process of socialization. You've been socialized. And and as long as you think that has value, as long as you, you're unwilling to let that go, then you remain trapped on what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And you can't, you won't do meditation. Why would you? Right. You'll go through the motion. And only because you can now say that, you know, I'm a meditator and add that to your identity. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all, you see. Mm-hmm. You see. Bishop, this, when you gave us this life transformation process, the seven steps, mm-hmm. isn't that what that's designed to, to let us get? It started to break down some of that. Right. You know, I've given you all kinds of uh, uh, considerations. I know. I know. The idea, though, behind every consideration is to make you get quiet and get clear, to cultivate some pravika, some discrimination, you know, to really start seeing this thing as things really are. But that itself required a certain level of liberation from the thinking process. So let me say a little bit about that, because if you if you bog down in this 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 identity maintaining thinking process. Mm-hmm. Right? If your thinking is always involved in this effort to maintain identity, then that distorts reality. You can't even see things the way things really are. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. And we won't take long, but uh, just a few things. Uh, When we talk about thinking, Basically, what is happening is that uh, this ego thinking, ego-based thinking, is always about the future or the past. It's where all of your thinking is at. Because it's in the future and the past, that's what you're trying to maintain. I mean, that's mm-hmm. the kind of thinking that you have to be involved in to maintain it. Mm-hmm. Your sense of, a, of, of who you think you are. Uh, the only way out of that, you got to get out of the past and out of the future at the level of your thinking. Mm-hmm. Does this make sense to you? Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? Because there, there's no way, as long as your thinking is past-based, future-based, there's no way out for you. you see? Uh, the way out is right in the middle. It's where the future and the past intersect. We call that the present. <laughs> Gift. <laughs> you see, right here. It's where you need to be to see things the way things really are. You can't see things by speculating, because where you at is speculation. And you got here. And you can't see it by reflecting on the past, because you gone. 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 Reality exists where? Mm-hmm. Does it exist anywhere else? No. 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 Does mm-hmm. it? So to see things the way things really are, you must by definition be able to come into the present, which requires your thinking to come out of the past and to come out of the future. Meditation is also purpose to enable you to get here. Hmm? longer aware of the past, and you're no longer uh, speculating it about the future. And you get here. You become centered. Hmm? Now, what's very interesting is that uh, to get here, um, you have to reduce, and I'm careful to use, uh, mm to say this here because language is so misleading. Mm-hmm. But the ideal is to reduce uh, the volume of thinking that you're doing. I don't know if that's a good yep. word. Yeah. Yeah. Does that yeah. ring? That mm-hmm. The volume. You see, if you're thinking a lot, the volume of your thinking directly uh, impacts on your ability to get here. Right. So let's say uh, most of you, if you think in 10,000 10, thoughts per minute, per second. <laughs> 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 10,000 
Right. Might be a little higher for my doctors. <laughs> so you're doing 10,000 uh, thoughts per second. You're way up on the scale, right? Which the, the higher your uh, volume of thinking, the further you are away from the center. Dang. So as you reduce this, let's say if you go down to 5,000 thoughts per second, you see, you're a little bit closer to the, to the center. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can get down to 3,000 thoughts per second, you know, Mars. the ideal is to get to zero thoughts per mm -hmm. second. You're neither thinking about the past nor you're thinking about the future. Maharaji uh, made this point years ago. All saints have made it, you know, I mean, it didn't begin with the Maharaj, obviously. But certainly it was for Maharaj that this teaching, uh, was, I was made aware of this fact. And Maharaj and all saints should say is that whole idea is to get your thinking out of the past, stop thinking about the past, and stop thinking about the future. That's what meditation really is. It is a letting go of this urge in you, this need in you, in fact, to think about the past and to think about the future. That's a kind of manorajia. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, a kind of a shepa, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So when you look and observe your thinking, all you're doing is jumping like this. You're you're moving from future to past to future to past at ten thousand thoughts per second. You see my point? Mm -hmm. That's all you're doing. You never come here. Because mm -hmm. if you get here, identity drops. Right. <laughs> That's why you don't want to mm -hmm. do that because there's. If you get here, there's no experience of who you think you are. Because to have that experience, you got to remember. Mm -hmm. Is that about right? Mm -hmm. It's your remembering that maintains this identity. In the present moment, it collapses. And you got to constantly remind yourself mm -hmm. of who you are. You know what I mean? Yes, beloved. Can I is it correct to say that I'm retraining myself? Because I had a lifelong training of perpetuating this <laughs> thinking sure. to, sure. to 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 support this fear, Identity, yeah. and I'm trying to now break this training. That's what meditation it, I, it is all about. It has a whole lot of fuel. Whole, whole lot of fuel. That's the struggle. That's why when you really understand your situation, you don't have any unrealistic expectation on the outcome of your practice. Yes, sir. You see, mm -hmm. I don't know that. <laughs> You know, you because you understand, this thing has been going on. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that's what your mind does. This is an outline of what actually goes on in your mind. It's the level of your thinking. You're thinking, future, past, future, past, future, past, future, past. You see, what has happened to me, what might happen to me, and mm -hmm. how I'm going to maintain me in that whole process. Right. And then you are, you see. And without a good understanding of this, uh, you, that can really freak you out like a person with amnesia. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, he's yeah. really possessed uh, uh, with finding out who, who I am. Who I yeah, am, you know? and that's what make amnesia uh, such a difficult state uh, uh, to be in. You know, there's many people that because of something happened to that structure in the brain that houses your memory, you see, it gets damaged, you know, and they can't remember who they are. That's a terrifying <laughs> thing. You see my point? But it's, it's, it's interesting because even with that cycle outlined there, uh, saw, uh, typically, you know, without the teachings, without, you know, being blessed with this tremendous gift and what's that you've given mm -hmm. us, the present um, is always suffering. That's what they would presume. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll presume in yeah. the future represent hope. Sure. See, that's why you and have the a lot of it. faith. So All of it. Yeah, so society has perpetuated a, a sort of a sort of thinking to get people conditioned to think that either you are about the future, oh, which yeah. will give you hope. That's right. 
in the past, which will give you faith to think about the future. Yeah, that's <laughs> so right. You're always, <laughs> you're always skipping over the past. You're yes. always living in the past, mm -hmm. or you're living in the future, that's and you're never yeah. in the present, which means you're in fantasy. You're in fantasy. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Absolutely. Yeah. So most of your thinking, technically, is fantasizing. Yeah. Fundamentally. Mm -hmm. About what can be, you see, <laughs> based on what was. It's fantasy. Now, here's the problem with fantasy-based thinking. When, you're, when you fantasize about a, 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 a thing, any object, when you fantasize about an object, uh, you are uh, having some kind of a uh, out-of-the-present moment experience, right? Mm -hmm. And you're thinking about uh, what you, uh, uh, the dinner you're going to enjoy tonight. Or you're thinking about sex, or whatever it is. You know, mm -hmm. you're thinking about it, and you're fantasizing about it, and you're enjoying it. See, fantasy mm -hmm. is where you get your enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Okay. But what happens is that you get addicted to the joy that is fantasy based, so mm -hmm. that when you get the real object, you can't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. If you're not enjoying life mm -hmm. as it is, as it arises, it's because you've done too much fantasizing. Mm -hmm. Now you fantasize prior to getting initiated about how all of what's <laughs> going to happen when you start your <laughs> You had all kinds of fantasies running about. Yeah. Boy, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to come to the ice center and boom, light's going to turn me. <laughs> Man, ain't going to have no more problem, no more worry. I'm going to be free. Most time, most sky can taste most sky. <laughs> 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 There's going to be no more struggle, you know. I'm, yeah. I'm going to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't yeah. wait to get your instructions, right? <laughs> but then when you get the real practice <laughs> and you enter into it, you do not enjoy that. <laughs> right? Because it's nothing like your what your fantasy, fantasy. was. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fantasy destroys your ability to enjoy reality. Mm -hmm. It absolutely destroys. can enjoy reality. Hence, you begin to see the connection between suffering and this fantasy-based thinking constantly of past and future at 10,000 thoughts per second. Back in <laughs> Meditation is about letting go of all but you can't do meditation with, if you're too concerned about maintaining yourself and your identity. Meditation is about forgetting about it. It is a, about really letting go of all of that and not caring about it. When you care so much about your image and how you are perceived by others and what you need to do to maintain that perception, right? When, when you, your social self is the center of your concern. You, you, you can't do any meditation. You can't get out of that. It's just not possible. You, see? you have to not care. Jesus says you must take no thought for yourself. Mm -hmm. you see? Is that developmental? Taking no thought to you for yourself? I mean, getting to the point where you have uh, the ability to uh, let go of the need to have this identity. Well, you can say it's developmental, and in many cases it will be, but then again, you see, beloved, uh, it can be just like that. You know what I mean? What make it, it depends. What makes it developmental uh, might be, uh, in some sense, a kind of building of uh, receptivity and openness, but 
the actual transition is subtorious. Mm. It's not something that you do, though. Uh, it's not something that you do in the sense that we talk about doing, but then it is something that you do. See, this is the <laughs> paradox. You follow what I'm Whoa. saying? This is a this is a great paradox. Hmm? Is it have anything to do with you being receptive without expectation? What it has to do with is understanding. If you don't understand, yeah. then mm -hmm. we have nothing going. You see, there is no substitution for understanding. And you all are very often in search of some mechanical, mindless activity you can engage in that will somehow function in lieu of your understanding. There is none. You're looking for a trick, a method, a technique. You see my point? In lieu of understanding. <coughs> there are no techniques in lieu of understanding. Are you following me? You simply must understand. And that understanding, you see, moves this process along. If you understand that uh, this uh, failure to, d to uh, reduce this volume of thinking and so forth, if you fail to understand that that is what distorts your perception of reality. See, you never see anything. Your, your thinking is there, and it obscures reality. You can't see it. It distorts it. You know, if you understand that, right, then, then, then maybe you will approach your meditation differently. Uh, perhaps even more fundamental than all of that is uh, your own uh, personal goal and integrity, you see. Do you want to live a life based on truth, or do you want to live your life based on lies? And that's a kind of a, a profound uh, consideration. Mm -hmm. See, the path is for those seeking truth, and it will not work for those who are not seeking the truth. It just won't. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So you you you, you must uh, uh, want the truth. What else can I say about it? How do the beliefs? So I believe I'm who I am, basically. That's why, and, and I accept that, and I enjoy that, and I like being that. That's that's pretty much sometimes why I like don't want. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sometimes, yeah, sometimes. But, yes, but yes. that's that's basically it. Yeah, I, yeah. I believe that I'm who you know this body yeah. mind and all that kind of Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely, this all is that a belief. Thing. That's right. That's the belief. fundamental belief. And, and and but as long as I believe that, I'm going to act that way. Absolutely. So I got it. That belief has to be countered. And a new belief, belief comedy. Yeah. Right. That's right. Absolutely yeah. right, Buddha Dasa. Okay. As long as you believe you are who you think you are, as long as you believe in the identity that you've been given, as long as that belief is in place, that's the way I'm going. There's no way out. You see. That belief has to change. That belief has to be. Be it considered to find out right. is it true or false. And that's see, really all it is. That's where it starts. Everything begins from there. That's why the mystics always come and they give us that first teaching. You are not the body. You're not the mind. You're not the self that you've been presuming to be. You're none of that. You are soul. You are pure consciousness. You are uh, a product of and an incarnation of God. I mean, this is how they, this is the message. It's the revelation. It's the revelation. Mm -hmm. You see, but you will not accept that revelation as long as I you believe, believe otherwise. Because you believe otherwise. Right. And that's the fundamental thing. 
So as long as you are operating out of that belief, nothing that can happen. You could be given all the meditation techniques on the planet. Nothing is going to change. You will always be struggling with those because meditation requires some liberation from that belief in order to even engage in it. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yes. It's just, it's just really that uh, simple. Hmm? So what you have to really consider, what you got to really weigh and really begin to look at for real is that are you really who you think you are? I mean, are you really this? How did you get to be that? Mm -hmm. okay. You see? Mm -hmm. I mean, really, you know, you cling into this identity as if it's something uh, divine and mm -hmm. sacred. Or <laughs> if, if, if that identity is a, uh, a, 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 a your divinity, your identity is not your divinity. Mm -hmm. You see? It's just an identity. It's just something you've been programmed with. It's not real. You see? It's conditioning. It's not who you are. You see? But if you, if you have never inspected that, you follow me? Then how, how would you let go of it? You see? So as long as there is this misidentification of self with body mind, your past and all of that, pretty much uh, leave you out of the race and rain. You can go through the motions, you can talk. See, even though you talk, we talk all the time, you know, but that still doesn't undermine it. You follow what I'm saying? It just doesn't undermine it. It ain't enough. So sooner or later, somehow or another, you know, you just got to have faith. You know, the, the gurus are telling us that we are pure consciousness. I'm not having no experience of it, but hey, you know what I mean? Let me give them the, the guys a bit of it now, and let me try this shit. You know what I mean? It almost comes to that. It's like a jumping out on faith. Yeah. You know, what I got to lose, you know, let me see. But that's what it's about, you see, beloved. Mm -hmm. And this is the core belief underlying. And this is the fear of this loss of identity. It says the fear of the loss of identity. And the greater the fear, the loss the less of faith. Yeah. Right, the yeah. less loss likely. of faith. Okay. That's right. Fear of loss of faith. So, like the 10,000 thoughts. It's all. He's looking at, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> And the longer you've been on this planet to be conditioned, the but more the, stuff you, you go. got. Now you talk. Damn, Guru <laughs> This is something, eh? Uh, it's, it, this is something. Oh, boy. You see, even, even uh, the belief that Christians have that when, when you die, you know, you're going to come back and, and, and have this body again. Oh, yeah, yeah. You the know, body is just deep. Body ego. Body ego. Well, you know, yeah. he's coming back and this will be heaven. Oh, you're going to rise up out the grave. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what oh, let's go grow back on yes. the bone. That's, that's, that's right. That's right. So, I mean, it's just uh, deep. that's deep. Mm -hmm. And remember, you've been uh, made by these same Christians. Right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Your identity, who you think you are, who you feel you are, have been made by the same people that made the Bible, made mm -hmm. Christianity. Mm -hmm. Psychologically, <coughs> you, are, you are a product of all of that, aren't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. These people are you. Mm -hmm. This is science. Mm -hmm. Standard. Standard of the day. Christian. You have all of the values, you have all of the self-concepts of self that comes out of a Judeo-Christian culture. You have been conditioned. And you have an identity that you cling into that has been programmed into you based on what other people have told you. They told you this about yourself, that about yourself, and you agree. Yeah, I, I am like this, I am like this, I am like this. And I'm going to stay like this, damn it. <laughs>
this is who I am. I mean, we all say that, right? And once we yeah. grow up and in adulthood, say, shit, this is who I am, yeah. and you ain't gonna change me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you defend, you defend that product, yeah. right? Yeah. Fight. Yeah, my mama told me I'm like this shit. I don't care what you say. My mama, my mama said. You know, that little kid said. My daddy said. My mama said. <laughs> you know, you fight at school yeah, about that, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> My greatest challenge is that, it ha um, and Bilal spoke about this, that this is a lifelong thing, mm. you know, because there's always, even when you get to understanding, if, if something is there where you're expecting something, or that it may happen right now, mm -hmm. then it defeats, it, it undermines things. Yes. I mean, it's, it's just this thing about always having that, really understand that this is a lifelong thing and it may not happen but you still got to do it i tell you will do it if you value it mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you mean, okay and that's 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 just a very practical uh approach to sodomy okay. see now you're talking about sodomy and the presumption is that we we bought all of this okay. you know what i mean we've heard all the arguments we consider them they make sense they line up now next step is applying you see, so when you get into that stage, you know, provided you've done the work, you see, uh, before I'm simply addressing that you must do the work, you can't leapfrog and then try to get in. You're not going to get into no side. You know what I mean? Uh, you will struggle with it and all of that. But once you have cleared your mind and got straight, you know what I mean about it all, have some uh, preliminary understanding. The understanding won't be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good enough to generate sodomy. Okay. But once you engage into that sodomy now, you see, if you've understood, you won't have any unrealistic expectations. Okay. You won't be thinking that this is going to be a snap. You follow what I'm saying? You'll see. All of that would have been disappeared uh, already okay. based on your understanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. If you are actually practicing with that expectation that uh, after this practice I'm going to get in line, then clearly you have not understood. You mm -hmm. missed the first part. Well, not in line, but it's, you know. It's yeah, I know a little in line. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why, again, I'm saying that, you know, meditation is not about becoming divine. You're already divine. Mm -hmm. It's about recovering the recognition of your own inherent divinity and that happens here. Mm -hmm. you see? You see? That's all meditation is about. It's about a kind of purification of the mental uh, process. You know? It's not a becoming divine. You're already divine. You're already consciousness. You see? You are consciousness. Already. That's not something that's going to happen. You are consciousness now. It's just that you are not identified with consciousness as being who you are. You identify with being the body, the history of the body, the relationship, being the mind, what's been programmed into the mind, blah, 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 blah. You see? The meditation is just about the re removal of all these false notions about the nature of who you are. That's all. By shutting down, going beyond that process. That's all this is about. You know. Could that be the reason why some of the um, Native Americans in the desert uh, are into peyote to uh, help the process of clearing them? <laughs> <up? laughs> I think yeah. some I think some brothers in uh, London is like <laughs> yeah, it was all right. you know into peyote. <laughs> well, actually, you know the use of those kind of mushrooms and things of that nature <laughs> was really purposed to help people get the uh, lesson that you are creating your own experience here, mm -hmm. which takes us to a deeper consideration. Mm -hmm. You know, a different consideration. Mm -hmm. you see. Uh, if all of that is true, fantasy is true, and all of that 
you know, everything that you are experiencing, even in the so-called material world, this event here that you're experiencing, mm -hmm. it's all been generated by your consciousness. This whole experience here is made out of the same fundamental stuff that a dream is made out of. Mm -hmm. you, see? you create the world of experiences that you have in consciousness. You are creating that. It's coming out of you. You see. Mm -hmm. uh, those uh, practices using uh, drugs and all of those other things were to uh, create all these kind of variety of experiences while holding on to the awareness that it ain't real. Mm -hmm. Their practice was to uh, ingest, you know, various uh, hallucinogenics, create that mm -hmm. fantasy out there, and hold on to the fact that this green monster coming at me with fire coming out of the ears is not real. It was a practice. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? So that now when you see Seth Rod, you don't get scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you ain't scared no more. You see my point? When you fall into the dream state, you know what I mean? Because see, a lot of time people didn't dream yeah. or had, you know, mm -hmm. couldn't keep yeah. their dream, they couldn't keep them vivid. Because dreams go so fast, mm -hmm. if you don't write them down, they're gone. So they say, okay, let me just create one and create the dream state. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now let me e explore it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they will sit much like you sitting, see? Mm -hmm. This is how you sit <laughs> when you're going to do mushrooms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if you go down into yeah, the yeah, desert, you to stand <laughs> and you go out into the desert, and you form a circle just like that, and you ingest the mushroom, because you're going to fall into, you know, you need to, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's how you sit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then you go into that uh, dream world, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have the shaman there mm -hmm. talking you through it. Yeah. Like you are talked through the bardo, like the dead is talked through the bardo. You have the shaman talking you through the experience. Mm -hmm. Now, see that green mm -hmm. drag? Because they don't took them, they know what's going to generate. Right. So they have certain plants that they know is going to generate certain categories mm -hmm. of uh, hallucinations, right? Mm -hmm. So they know that you're going to see a pink elephant, they're going to see this next. Everybody done did this. Mm -hmm. said, you see that elephant? Yeah. yeah. You know, now we'll go into them. You know, all kinds of yeah. things, you see. To conquer the fear. You know, mm -hmm. fundamentally. And to let you know how plastic experience is, how, how this is not a static thing. You're generating it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to you know, find that place where consciousness itself is not uh, affected. It's all about recovering the experience of being this pure consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we've talked uh, a lot today, we've talked a lot in the past, but I thought, uh, again, since we're here today, that we just take a moment to just again reflect on uh, what this is all about, this meditation business, you know what I mean? And what, what what's really up. Uh, its goal is, you see, yes to that. And to, to counteract those 10,000 thoughts per minute and the past, going for the past to the future, to simmer. Simmer. That's to simmer that's the sign of it. And yeah. No matter how, you know, what it is, just keep doing the simmer. I mean, keep as much as you can. Sure, sure. And, and, and you and stay out of that. If simmer yeah. starts uh, reducing the uh, TPS. But it's the simmer. I mean, I can't say I ain't gonna think no thoughts. I mean, no. I mean, I wanted to. It's two things that happen. Uh, if you are able first to take your, uh, hold your body still. You gotta still the body, and the reason that's important because when you still your body, you, the breath slows. Now the breath and the thinking, uh, hand in hand. Right, they mimic one another. The more the breath quiet down, the, the, the more that uh, TPS diminishes. So as the body reaches a certain level of stillness, the, the thinking slows down, slows down. And it makes it easier to get into the present. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then uh, once... Uh, 
you have uh, been able to uh, focus the attention on this mantra. See, beloved, what you're doing, you're it's a kind of cultivation process going on here. Uh, so you give your, uh, you take an object, hmm? the mantra or whatever, you give it all your attention, right? And you give it your attention to the point where you are not aware of any other thing. When you reach that point where you are no longer aware of any other thinking going on, other than this mantra, then you drop the mantra itself. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And then when you drop that, you are hearing, shove it. You see? Because that's what's going on behind the thinking. Right? You keep dropping stuff. The actual technique is the Cimbaran. When the Cimbaran gets mature, you have Dion of some sort. Then you drop the Cimbaran, the tension of absorbing the Dion. Then you drop the Dion, and the tension is in shove it. And then you drop shove it as an object. And now consciousness is just conscious of itself. Simran gets you out of that uh, mode. But you must uh, focus the attention until it matures to the point where you're not aware of anything else going on around you. Any thoughts about the body, no thoughts about the world, no thoughts about me. You must focus your attention unto the mantra until there is no more thoughts about you. that occurs in your case, uh, then you will have moved to another level, another place, and uh, you will be having some kind of a vision, and you just focus on that, and as you do that, the sound comes, and then you focus on the sound, and then you drop the sound. I don't know uh, if this helps it, you better imagine what is to, pr to be going through here, but that's fundamentally it. Hmm? That's doing the formal practice. It's all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm I mean, but yeah, so yeah. as we, you know, you say uh, knowledge while walking, knowledge yeah, while eating, yeah, knowledge yeah, you while... Yeah, you can practice that all the time. See, yeah, that's, just, that's just a kind of remembering, Okay. okay. you know. Now, I mean, if you just did this, just based on what we're saying, just kind of remember, I'm, I am pure consciousness. I am, you know, whatever you are doing, you see, do it with the knowledge that you are just this consciousness, just this pure consciousness itself. If you can just do that, you see, that's a high sadhana. You know what I mean? Most people can't do that. That's why you do formal practice. But if you can do that, you see, so you have to understand, uh, in the scheme of things, uh, meditation and these kind of things are only necessary because in your condition, in our condition, you, you just, you're not capable of anything other than meditation that pertains to, you know, the experience of your own individual. I mean, you, you, you just can't go straight away to it. You don't have that. You follow me? You're not a dinker. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But this uh, this practice of uh, doing everything with knowledge, you see, while Maharaj, you read in the literature, they say, well, you should do your simran while walking, talking, eating, mm -hmm. right? It's just another way, you see. Uh, simran really means remembering, doesn't it? That's what the word literally means means to remember. But remember what? Mm -hmm. Who you and what you are. 
No matter what you do, while doing it, do it with knowledge. Knowledge of the self. Knowledge of who you are, you see. Uh, that's, that's, that's a practice itself. This is Shuddha Vikapa. In Chabarism, we call it Shuddha Vikapa. You got the right mental concept of who you are. You see, right now, you, you're operating on a wrong mental concept of who you are. Mm -hmm. Aren't you? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So, and you're practicing that. You're doing that. You're maintaining that. So instead of that, it says, uh, uh, practice the right mental concept of yourself. Now practice that, you see. And what is the right mental concept of yourself? That I am pure consciousness itself. That's a concept at first, isn't it? It's a concept. It's all right, you see. But practicing that concept of self as being pure consciousness pays the way for the experience of self as pure consciousness. Practicing the concept of being a body <coughs> completely uh, shuts down, mm -hmm. blocks out uh, any possibility of experiencing yourself as pure consciousness. Because you, you're practicing the opposite. You're practicing, I am not pure consciousness. I am matter. I am not pure mm -hmm. consciousness. I am the body. I am not pure consciousness. You see my point? I am my emotions. I am not pure consciousness. I am my thoughts. I am not. Your practice is, I am not pure consciousness. This is what you are practicing. While sitting, you are practicing avidya, ignorance. You are practicing ignorance while sitting. Ignorance <laughs> while walking. Ignorance while eating. Aren't you? Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's what we do, aren't we? That's right. So it seems that it's your practice hurts you. Mm -hmm. Which practice? The, the, <laughs> practice, of, the, the practice, practice of ignorance, of you, ignorance hurts you. Well, I mean, but what, up, what yeah, else can be practiced? <laughs> but in, in this condition, don't we start there? I mean, because we, we, we start... Once you've been ignorance. initiated, you've been given an alternative to all of that. And it's simply about following the instructions of the rule. You are no longer able to uh, resort to that argument. Is that about right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you are practicing that, it is simply because you are refusing to follow instructions. It's really that simple. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, of course, what you say is exactly what you're doing. You go on practicing ignorance, ignorance right. in spite of the instructions. Absolutely. <laughs> you follow me? Yeah, I see mm -hmm. that. And the only way to stop doing that, the right. only way to stop doing that is to uh, follow the instructions of the Guru. But you won't stop doing that as long as you have more faith in your mind and your pursuing wisdom Absolutely. than is the reality. Yeah, that's part of the problem. Right. So you have to become humble mm -hmm. and receive instruction and just follow the instructions. See, the path is so simple if you just follow instructions. But unless you really made a real honest to God inventory in, of your life, if you haven't really examined your life, you see, you will not you will not yield your so-called wisdom because you will still be convicted that you got something like wisdom. But if you would just look at your life and just take a moment, you'll see you don't have no wisdom. You don't mess your life up. <laughs> You follow what I'm saying? Yes, sure. yes. If you can get out of this fantasy shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, you understand? Yes, sure. And stop looking at your life through the distortion of your fantasy mm -hmm. about what you wanted it to be. I'm not talking about what you want it to be. I'm talking about what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you really look at this, you will be humbled. Yeah. yeah. There is no other way to become humble. But you must do this. You must set your life in the palm of your hand. You must look at the outcome of following your mind, for real. Mm -hmm. And it's only after you have done that will the necessary denta arise in you where you will follow the instructions. Mm 
until that happens, you're not going to follow no instruction. You will say, yes, I should follow the instruction. You will know all of that. You will mouth it. It was rhetorical. We should follow the instruction. How long y'all been saying that? <laughs> Years. Years. <laughs> I should follow. We should follow the instruction of the guru. We should follow. But you don't follow the instructions of the guru. So you clearly you can see that just saying I should follow the instructions of the guru is not adequate. That's just intellectual murmuring. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's nothing in you that moves you because you have not looked. And I have always argued that you got to sit your life in the palm of your hand, get quiet somewhere. No fooling, no kidding. And you got to look. You really got to see what has happened as a result of you following your mind. And you got to look at that. And that will humble you. You see? It will destroy your fantasy. But remember what I said? People prefer fantasy to what? Yeah, we yeah. Have <clears throat> you prefer the fantasy about it all to reality. That's what happens when you live in fantasy too long. You, 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 you don't want to. Mm -hmm. Contact reality no more. You see? That's what mm -hmm. egoity is. Egoity is the avoidance of reality. You're avoiding reality. Even we, we try to even avoid the reality of Solomon. We're trying to avoid it. You see? How will you avoid Solomon? You see? You can't. And so it's, it's a matter of seriousness, you see. And either you are able to engage in uh, some kind of uh, reflection and become serious, or you must be made serious, you see. But seriousness has to occur. Otherwise, this goes on and on and on and on. We've spent all kinds of lifetimes doing this. This is not the first lifetime, you see. Not the first lifetime any of us probably been on the path, probably been on the path. You know, in previous lifetime we had gurus and all of that and, and pissed it all away, you see. Doing the same thing we're doing now, you see. Rhetorical spiritual practice, it's just rhetorical. You, you, you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A kind of mummery of it. Mm -hmm. It's not that difficult, you see. Gurus say, Disciple do, but mm -hmm. this is not complex. It's not difficult. You don't need to read 10,000 books for it. You know what I mean? It's a real simple process. But it does require humility. You see? Mm -hmm. And the recognition that you need to do something. But see, you all have not really, truly, and in most cases, recognize you need to do sadhana. I mean, you want to kind of do sadhana to please the guru. You want to do sadhana on some fantasy thing. You follow what I'm saying? You want to do sadhana because all the great people in the past did sadhana. You want to do sadhana for, you know, this reason and that reason. All of it is pretty much associated with some kind of uh, hit for the identity or something. Or whatever it is, you follow what I'm saying? But you haven't, and you must ultimately recognize you need to do sadhana. So this is a good note to end our brief uh, conversation today on, you see? You need to do sadhana. When you do sadhana based on the recognition that I need to do sadhana, you see? You all talk about your breakdowns and all of that. All of that is because you don't recognize you need. If you recognize that you really need to get up and meditate, you would get up and meditate. For real. Mm -hmm. But you're able to uh, uh, have your breakdown because something deep down inside of you really don't recognize you need, you need to meditate. And when you're just meditating... Uh, out of some kind of a social motivation because you all are, we are part of the house of Ra, we're in a spiritual community, it's a kind of keeping up with the Joneses going on here, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. for 
Raji meditating. I'm going to meditate. That nigga can't meditate. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You see, I'm going to go to the cooler house. I'll show them. <laughs> I can cool it with the best. Of. I mean, your motive is social. That's all right. But it's got to get more profound than that. You see? You got to recognize that you need Because nobody else on the planet is doing sadhana. I need to do sadhana. I need to meditate. I need to go to satsang. I need to do seva. See, until it gets there, ain't nothing happening. You, see, you don't get up and do your practice because you don't feel the need to do it. That's it. Everything else you say is bullshit. You see? I was laughing at you all cooler. You see, when you, all of you were presenting the causes <laughs> of your failures and breakdowns. And Sahasaji would say, make up, I laugh. And <laughs> <laughs> y'all tell on her, right? <laughs> you don't mind? I don't. <laughs> She'll Break tell on down. herself, right? Yeah. So she would say, well, I, got, I, put, I, put on, I don't want to take my makeup off. <laughs> I said, this girl is crazy. <laughs> but crazy like the rest of us. I mean, we all sound crazy like that. Mm -hmm. game with me and say, oh, I'm doing this to please the guru. Well, you, you, that's, you, you're a long way away from that level of spiritual development. Are <laughs> you going to leap from asshole to bhakti? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. Who are that's we so kidding? <laughs> you see? Unless you need to please the Guru, then that's a different matter. You see? Then that's real bhakti. You need to please the Guru. Like a fish needs water. Mm -hmm. Then that's what makes it bhakti. You see? Not no trip. Not reinforcing your ego. Not reinforcing your vanity. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not uh, elevating your status in your own mind. Not fantasy. But you need to please the food. That's a need. It's like with the need for food. You understand? Mm -hmm. You eat, right? Right. Y'all mm -hmm. don't have no breakdowns in eating. <laughs> 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 None that I've noticed. <laughs> I never received a report. Anybody say I'm having trouble? <laughs> you know, are very intentional <laughs> when it comes to that, aren't you? Because, and rightly so, we recognize we need to eat. That's understanding. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's profound understanding. I need to eat. There are consequences if I don't eat. So you all feel there is no consequences when you don't meditate. You feel a little guilty. You feel a little shame and all that. But all of that is uh, relative to your image. You follow what I'm saying? Your mm -hmm. image takes a hit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now people going to know I didn't practice. I missed. They're going to lose their respect for me, etc., etc. Uh, I let the guru down, and then now he's going to think less of me and all of that. You know? There are consequences of your not meditating that it's just as real as consequences of you not eating. You know the consequences of You don't feel shame when you don't eat, do you? Shame is the least of your concern. You try. <laughs> Ain't no shame in that. Is you, you don't even play that game, the shame game, do you? You stay focused. I need, I miss my meal. I got to eat me something soon. <laughs> right? I mean, you stay focused, right? 
and you're going to get that done, aren't you? <laughs> you don't let no guilt get in your way. <laughs> I know I, I would. <laughs> so it's like that, is <laughs> If I don't eat, especially if you, uh, there, are, there are certain conditions, and you get older, you get uh, diabetic and so forth. So I mean, you got to eat. <laughs> it's a matter of, you got to take your <laughs> You don't miss taking your medicine. <laughs> I mean, we're getting at that age, right? You got medicine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you got to take. And you don't miss that medicine. <laughs> I'm reminded of a guy uh, used to work for uh, one of the agencies that uh, uh, I contracted with. Right down in the loop, set, or our job for youth, right there in Washington, not right around the corner. Mm -hmm. This guy was uh, assistant director program, young guy, 40, 42, but he, he was diabetic, he had a condition and all of that, you know, he had to take his medicine, right? But he was in rebellion against that, you know, because, hey, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. he's only 42, he shouldn't have to be taking medicine in the first place, mm -hmm. and he can conquer this and all of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was always concern, of, uh, you know, uh, about this guy, you know, uh, mm -hmm. not taking his medicine. His co-workers would remind us, any time for you to take your medicine? Mm -hmm. I take it later. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but the real truth of the, is that he went uh, down south. I'll never forget this because we were going to have a, mon a, a meeting that Monday. He had went down south over the weekend and uh, didn't take his medicine with him. They told him, you better take your medicine. I don't need I get this medicine. Or die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, he died because he didn't recognize he need to take mm -hmm. this medicine. Mm -hmm. Your meditation is like medicine. They even come from the same root word. Right. Mm -hmm. This is medicine. So you all need to change how you look at, at your meditation, mm -hmm. this medicine. And you need this medicine. Like a mental patient needs their lithium. <laughs> <laughs> you need this, man. Right. Schizophrenia going on. That's right. You're going to fall back into schizophrenia with these hallucinating and all of that. But y'all get my point. Yes. Exactly. This sadhana, this practice, <clears throat> only becomes uh, solid. You recognize that you need to practice. You need to do something. And until you do that, you're going to always be confessing these breakdowns <coughs> and always inventing bullshit reasons for their existence. It is all bullshit. You are simply lying to yourself. This uh, understanding sink deep into you, because tonight, tomorrow, you will be again uh, facing the same requirement, practice, right? And uh, as you lay comfortably in your bed there, cozy and warm, Alarm clocks off. Think about what I said. Mm -hmm. And consider, do you need it? Are you not going to do anything that you don't feel you need to do? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Anything else to say about it? Before we uh, practice a little bit, we, boy, we spend all our time talking. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's, that's usual, isn't it? <laughs> we are, we are the Radashis, right? We do a lot of talking. But let's, uh, so that we don't tap our, our whole day, we're just going to uh, take uh, uh, an hour here and sit. I think uh, you all can make up for the other time uh, later. I mm -hmm. think uh, 
sometimes it's, it's worth uh, these little chats, you know what I mean? Uh, having a little bit of focus. Uh, so let's all go pee and be ready to start at 12.15, uh, huh? All right? You all can put your room back together. <laughs>
This is a man we have a little more than an acre. So in the summertime it's all greened up. All right. All right. That's how I end it. Now, this is for people that haven't been you out there. Got everybody? See, yeah. Everybody? See, look, yeah, they got everybody. You see our little cooler house. Alright, here's go. Here go your first round. Alright. Put them and in then my when seat. you finish with these, finish doing these, then I'll give you your second round. Yes, sir. Overwhelm. Okay. Cause I got them. Alright. I shake. I shake. 